What is going on YouTube? Welcome into my week 17 NFL picks. So this series usually gets uploaded on my Patreon. That is patreon.com slash that franchise guy. But the first NFL week of every month I do upload here on YouTube. So if you enjoy my picks, if you want gambling advice or just enjoy this video every week, you will get some of that exclusive content over on my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash that franchise guy. You'll also support the channel. We got lots of draft content coming that way as well. So I appreciate you in advance for checking it out. And let's go ahead and get started with my week 17 picks coming off a really good couple of weeks. So the last two weeks, I am seven and two on my plays, which is like where I advise to actually put your money, whether it's an over-under, a parlay, a teaser, a spread, whatever it may be. Eight and three against the spread, two and zero oh picking upsets, and one and zero oh on my over-unders, which has really put my record for the season back in a uh, in a spot that I'm I'm very proud of. You know, 35 and 29 against the spread. We are positive picking upsets, which is maybe the most the thing I'm most proud about and 12 and 10 on my over unders on the season. So been a good year, hoping to finish strong. And of course, with playoff season around the corner, playoff predictions will be a big one this year. So make sure you subscribe so you do not miss that. So enough blabbering. Let's get into the games. Giants at Bears. And I actually have a bet the spread pick here now. Not enough confidence on this to make it a play necessarily, uh, but with whoever it is at quarterback against the Bears, I do think they'll be able to pretty handedly outduel Mike Glennon or Jake Fromm, whatever it is for the Giants, in what has been probably the worst or second worst offense in the league over the last month of the year. The Bears defensively have actually been playing really well. And whether you've got Fields in there who I think can run around and make some plays or it's Foles or Dalton, I just think you're going to get a much more capable offense and a Bears team that's in a weird way kind of playing hard for Matt Nagy right now. Uh, so at home, a reeling Giants team. I think the Bears cover the spread in this one. Uh, it, it might not be pretty. It might not feel easy all the time because the Bears probably not six points better than most teams in the league. But at home, I think they are six points better than the New York Giants. So I got 23 to 13 Bears. Then Tampa at the New York Jets. 13 point spread. There's a lot of big point spreads this week. I obviously am I'm going to be taking Tom Brady and the Bucks to take care of business here. The Jets are in the garbage tier of teams. Um, you know, Zach Wilson is capable of making some plays happen, which could lead to like a backdoor scenario. Probably pretty unlikely. I mean, this is a massive mismatch. I lean towards Tampa Bay covering the spread here. But with that big of a point differential, I'm actually going to lean towards the teaser here and include them in a six-point teaser with a team coming up later on in the video. So I'm going to go Tampa 30-17 to 17, right on the fringe of covering that spread. But with fear of the backdoor cover, I'm going to put them in a six-point teaser, um, putting it down to a seven-point spread. Then we've got Atlanta at Buffalo. 14 and a half point spread here goes to show you what Vegas thinks about the Atlanta Falcons. That is just disrespectful. And I actually would lean towards Atlanta there. Now, Josh Allen's heating up. He looked really just collected and um, ready to go and like heat up in for a playoff run here for the Bills. So uh, against a measly Falcons defense, I certainly wouldn't be surprised if the Bills cover this spread. Um, but that said, I, I just... I, I don't think there's value there at 14 and a half points. That's three scores effectively. So I, I'm going to take the Bills to win this one at home and it not be like overly contested. But again, that point spread just too much. 33 to 21 is my score prediction here. I do like the over in this game, however, at 44 points. I think the Bills are certainly going to um, put up some points offensively. And then you just need a touchdown or two from the Falcons, which is more than possible. So uh, I'm going to go Bills 33 to 21, picking the over in this game. Philly at Washington. This is going to be an upset pick for me. I'm going to take the Washington football team to uh, kind of sneak in and beat the Philadelphia Eagles. I think this is just an evening out period. You know, the Eagles have a lot of hype right now. Reality is they have not beaten anybody. They have not beaten a team that currently has a winning record. And I think Washington's going to look, look at this as an opportunity to not just 
really like stick it to Washington, who, uh, sorry, stick it to Philadelphia, who they had to play two weeks ago with a reserve squad with really bad luck with COVID, getting a bunch of guys back this week, a redemption opportunity for them at home. But also, like, they're not out of the playoff picture here. So um, this, to me, is a little bit of gut feel, but I think there's something to be said about Ron Rivera putting together a good game plan in his second meeting against Jalen Hurts and um, Washington doing enough getting Taylor Heineke back in this game to squeak out an upset victory here. So I'm actually pretty confident in this one. I'm going to go with the Washington football team to win this game, betting the spread and the upset on this game. Then Kansas City at the Cincinnati Bengals, probably the game of the week. There's a couple good games this week, but I'm really excited to watch this one above any else. Uh, I think Burrow's playing phenomenal football right now. The Chiefs, I just put number one in my power rankings. Huge game for both parties involved here. And uh, this one to me is one that I think is just going to be more fun to watch than to gamble I don't know what the over-under in, in, is in this game. I'm assuming it's pretty high. Um, maybe the over could be the play there. But I don't think five points is like a lot of value for Kansas City, especially in Cincinnati. I wouldn't be stunned if the Bengals won this game. I think they match up relatively well with the, the Chiefs as far as their ability to attack that Chiefs defense and uh, kind of play that bend-don't-break style of defense that Mahomes can have some difficulties against with a lot of split safety defenses, zone coverages, that kind of stuff. So I really think this is going to be a fun matchup, a potential playoff preview in this one, and uh, not any gambling predictions in this one. I will take the Chiefs, just the better team is playing really good football right now, but uh, definitely upset alert there for the Cincinnati Bengals. Then Jacksonville at New England, a get right opportunity for New England in this one, who's been reeling the last couple of weeks. Um, but 15 and a half points is a huge spread for a Patriots team that, you know, other than the, the game against the Jets, they don't really blow the roof off of anybody's house uh, offensively. So that's tricky. Um, I do think the Patriots win. I think the defense scoring a touchdown could be a sneaky little um, like prop bet in this one. If you want a little fun action on this game because of the way that Bill Belichick is historically played against rookie quarterbacks and, and Trevor Lawrence is not having a good season. So keep an eye out for that. I'm going to go 27-14 Patriots, which is effectively a blowout, but still not enough to cover what is a massive 15 and a half point spread. Miami at Tennessee, another significant game here in the AFC. This one I think could go either way. Uh, I initially really leaned towards Tennessee but when I thought about the way Miami's defense is playing right now, I don't think they're going to let A.J. Brown carry the Titans offense. I think they're going to really do a good job uh, game planning to defend A.J. Brown and force Ryan Tannehill to beat them. And I don't know if he's capable of doing that. Inversely, the Titans defense is balling out right now. I don't know how they're going to block these guys up front for the Miami Dolphins. And I could see Tua really struggling. The over-under in this game is like 40 points, and that might be too high. So it's going to come down to who can protect the football, who can run the ball better, and who can you know make a, a couple of big plays in the passing game, which is going to be tough for both parties. So this is going to be a scrappy battle between two Bill Belichick disciples, uh, Vrabel and uh, obviously Brian Flores. So tough, tough game to predict here. I, I don't love the three and a half points in what should be a really tight contested game. I'm going to take Ryan Tannehill to outperform Tua, uh, but you know, I really think this could go either way and, and could just come down to a fumble here, uh, a blocked punt there, that kind of game. So I'm gonna go Titans 20 to 17 and let's, let's carry on here. So uh, Rams at Ravens, big playoff implications in this one. Expecting Lamar Jackson back this week. I, I did see a clip of him in practice, but not moving all that well. So, you know, uh, Lamar's probably going to have to beat the Rams with his arm in this game. And that's incredibly difficult to do when he's going to have Aaron Donald, Von Miller, and these guys bearing down on him. Uh, the, the Rams contain extremely well, and Lamar isn't probably going to have his typical mobility. So that's going to be tough. Um, they have Jalen Ramsey to potentially match up in the slot from that star position on Mark Andrews, who's been eating. This is a tough matchup 
for the Ravens, honestly. And, and the Rams' run defense over the last month or so has been probably the best in the NFL. So uh, Aaron Donald coming for that defensive player of the year crown. Again, um, I, I like the Rams in this game, and I like them to cover a three-and-a-half-point spread on the road. Not to mention, um, it, it's this Baltimore defense is just reeling right now, and I, I think the, the uh, Rams offensively are going to attack this secondary. So tough matchup for the Ravens, and I think they're just going to be a little bit overwhelmed in this one. I like the Rams three-and-a-half points in this one. Okay, our next game is a little tough because Carson Wentz is on the COVID list. Obviously a huge swing in this one from Carson Wentz to Jacob Eason. And that's why I'm gonna basically split this game up. I, I think it's likely Wentz does not play. And if he doesn't, that's a huge break for the Raiders who've not exactly gotten a lot of breaks this season, but an opportunity to go against Jacob Eason to I think flip the standings and actually get into the playoff picture ahead of the Colts if they win this game. I could be wrong about that, but I, I think they would take a playoff spot, especially if a couple of these other games break the, the right way for them. But that's a huge opportunity for the Raiders that defensively are playing pretty well. And Derek Carr, I just think can make enough plays um, and is a smart quarterback that maybe matches up a little better against a zone heavy defense like the Colts run uh, to scrap out if Wentz does not play. Now, if Wentz goes, the Colts are just a significantly better football team than the Raiders. And with their starting quarterback, I would expect to win. Six point spread is what they're listing right now. I still think it's going to be a tighter game than that because um, there's going to be a lot of fight in both these teams in this game. So I don't see a lot of betting value, but as far as who I'm picking, I'm going Colts if Wentz plays and Raiders if Wentz does not play. Detroit at Seattle, not gonna spend a lot of time on this one. The spread's actually not officially listed yet. I think that's because Jared Goff is pending as far as if he plays. These two teams are very tough to predict right now. Detroit probably playing a little bit harder than Seattle right now. Seattle still does have Russell Wilson. You would think they, should be able to take care of business pretty handedly against Detroit at home, but that just hasn't been the mantra for Seattle this season. They just are not the same team. So I'll take the Seahawks to win. I don't really know what the spread is or what it should be here, and let's move on. Uh, Carolina at New Orleans. New Orleans at home in this one, starting to get some guys back. It's probably gonna be Taysom Hill in there uh, coming off the COVID list, and they also are getting um, Demario Davis back for that defense and ultimately you've got a top defense against one of the worst offenses in the league and two of the worst offenses in the league going at each other this is going to be a low scoring game this team's also getting Sean Payton back by the way who they clearly missed um, one of the best play callers in the league if not the best so Saints at home I think they win but in what should be a game that has about 35 points scored I don't love seven points being the spread in this one so I'll take the Saints to potentially get back into that seven seed uh, with some tough games this week for the Vikings and Eagles. Um, you know, Saints playing with uh, playoffs on their mind and, and potentially a chance to take out the Bucks again this year. Um, I think that's kind of what they're playing for at this point. Denver at the LA Chargers, six and a half point spread for the Chargers coming this one from Vegas. Gosh, Chargers are a tough team to bet this year. They have really been up and down and they're a matchup dependent team and this Denver team has, has given them trouble. If you remember, they beat um, the Chargers 28 to 13 and uh, gave Herbert one of his worst performances. Vic Fangio kind of throwing some stuff at him. So I don't know if the Chargers are necessarily, necessarily gonna just figure that out um, over a couple of months here. So it, the Chargers should win, right? They are a better football team. They have more talent, they're at home, but Denver's just also been really tough to predict this year. I'm staying away from this game. There's no way you can bet this, especially at six and a half points. After we saw what Denver did to the Chargers last time, I'll take the Chargers to win because I'm taking the better quarterback there. But again, not a lot of gambling value there. Houston at San Francisco. I came very close to saying San Francisco comes out and blows the doors off of Houston. But Houston's been super competitive and specifically, you know, they're physical up front. And I don't know for sure, especially with Trey Lance potentially starting this week, that 
the Niners are just going to run all over Houston. I, I really don't feel great about that. So it's it's a tough game to predict here with um, at least from a 12 and a half point spread perspective with the quarterback situation in flux for San Francisco and Houston kind of being underrated right now with Davis Mills playing okay. So I do think San Francisco wins pretty handedly. 12 and a half is a little much. I, I think if you include them in six point teasers, maybe even as a third leg with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and one of our upcoming games might not be a bad play either. Um, but I do think this is a opportunity for San Francisco to kind of lock in their playoff positioning. Pretty sure they have a division game week 17 that won't be a gimme. So pretty sure they can clinch the sixth seed and or better with a win in this one. And I expect them to do that. Arizona at Dallas. Five and a half point spread in this one. It, I get it. You know, Arizona's slumping. Dallas is balling out right now. I think there's maybe a little bit of a evening back to the norm for both of these teams to the point that maybe it should be more like three and a half for Dallas. I understand why Dallas is favored. For me, I'm going to pick the upset here and bet the over. I could see this going either way. I think this is going to be a really fun game. I think Kyler Murray is going to kind of light it up a little bit. He, he played really well in Dallas last year. I understand it's a completely different defense, but he's from that area. There's something about the vibe that he had, that kind of extra like FU energy um, in that game. And I, I could see Kyler getting back to, you know, that looking like a little more like that MVP quarterback that we've seen. And you're going to end up with one of these games, in my opinion, where it's who has the ball last, who, who can execute in the fourth quarter and uh, with Arizona kind of with their backs against the wall a little bit as far as they need a big win to boost their morale heading into the playoffs I'm just gonna kind of flip a coin and, and pick Arizona in this one that's it's really what this comes down to I I don't think it's it's great value as far as betting them I could see Dallas really lighting it up and getting out of control for Arizona to come back and win it but either way I like the over in this game is what I'm saying from a value perspective on the gambling market so over 51 and a half points which is not a small number but I, I would maybe say it should be a little bigger okay Minnesota at Green Bay Green Bay can uh, almost clinch the one seed in this one and I think if Dallas did lose they would clinch the one seed in a win in this one Min uh, Green Bay lost to Minnesota last time but Things are changed. Uh, they have Kenny Clark this time around who gives Minnesota fits. Uh, Jair got activated. I don't know if he's gonna play, but if you have Jair Alexander to cover Justin Jefferson, that's a huge difference maker. But ultimately Sunday night football in Lambeau Field, an opportunity for Rodgers to kind of, I don't wanna say clinch the MVP, but really make that MVP statement. I, I think Green Bay plays with a little bit of um, tenacity in this one and puts their foot down. They've talked a lot in the last couple of weeks about finishing games, and I think that they look to do that and don't let up in this one. I really like the way Green Bay matches up here. I don't think Kirk Cousins has an elite performance like he did in the first meeting here. So Green Bay is gonna be the second leg in that teaser with the Bucks. They just need to win the game at a half point spread. And I also like Green Bay to cover the spread. So we're kind of double dipping with my plays here with a teaser with the Bucks and betting the spread on Green Bay as well uh, in a big Sunday night performance. Then Cleveland at Pittsburgh, icky game. I'm gonna take the Browns 21 to 20, ugly, ugly matchup. Both these teams just kind of holding onto playoff hopes for dear life. So I think this is going to be a physical matchup and for, you know, AFC North fans that like old school football, could be a fun game. Uh, Miles Garrett's a little beat up right now. Baker obviously beat up, but the, the Steelers inversely, just all their problems. This game is just a mess. Not going to be betting this one either way. Um, but again, should be a scrappy, lower scoring game. And uh, maybe a little bit of a regression to the mean with Baker Mayfield, who's had just a horrific season. Maybe he can have a nice moment in this game and uh, pull things out in the fourth quarter. So there are my week 17 picks. Hope you guys enjoyed. Good luck to the gambling folk and gamble responsibly. If you want access to this video next week and throughout the playoffs as well, 
uh, and other draft exclusive content as we get into draft season. Check it out on my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash that franchise guy. I appreciate your support and enjoy week 17 of action. We'll see you guys next Tuesday or Monday for the power rankings, depending on which day I do it. But uh, peace out. We'll see you then.